Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you guys my Yu-Gi-Oh! deck collection, video number four. Uh, it's actually been uh, a little good while since my last deck collection uh, video, but you guys have actually been requesting this a lot, so I figured why not? I finally got all my decks organized for this video, and it's actually a lot of fun to do just to go through each deck and give a little small description as to how I got the deck and basically just what it is. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We got quite a few number of decks to go through. Just gotta pick one at random here to start off. Let's go ahead and start off with actually the one that I do probably the most updates to, and that's my Odd Eyes Perform Pal deck. Uh, I've started this deck ever since Duelist Alliance came out and just been updating it since. It has evolved quite a lot since then. I think, you know, it started off with me maining uh, Swordfish, Whip Cobra, all the ones from the beginning. I think I even mixed Odd Eyes and Stargazer and Time Gazer Magician with the deck. And my most recent version that I had with my deck profile was the version that emphasized the Pendulum variant with the Fusion uh, format using Gatling Ghoul and a bunch of the other Odd Eyes um, cards with it. I think I'll still continue to work on the deck, maybe um, with Arc V ending and V Reigns becoming a thing. I think more of the manga cards will become a key center focus for the deck, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I'm not sure if they'll be getting any more with the upcoming packs or not that focus more on the anime, uh, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, up next, we have my Metal Foe Yang Zing deck. This one was actually the deck in which I use at Locals the most. I'm waiting for something else to come out, you know, for me to use um, at Locals. Uh, this is one I've used the most. I just, you know, love the combos that the deck plays. It's also one of the decks which I have a side, you know, made for my Locals uh, specifically. But this one, um, like I said, I've had it for at least a good couple months now, and I've loved using it. I don't think I've used much else at Locals, just because I'm the most comfortable with this deck and the plays that can do a real OTK format deck there. But like I said, hopefully I'm curious to see what deck I'll use next as my main at Locals, coming up with Link Summoning being a thing. I know it's definitely going to not be a synchro heavy format, sadly, you know, for me to use, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, up next we have my Karibo deck. I actually finally got the three Winking Karibo playset for this deck. This is probably one of my most fun decks and, you know, one of my most viewed deck profiles that I do. Um, just because it is kind of unique. I know that, you know, people really do like Karibo. And I wanted to focus on a deck where people can, you know, just mainly use him for the whole thing. And I use a lot of the different varieties of Karibo, kind of a chaos form as well. I don't think my Blackluster Soldier is still in this deck because I do practice a lot by changing it up just to see what I can do with it. Uh, I think it's more of a pure build of the Karibo deck so far at the moment, but, you know, it has the Multiply, the Berserker Crush, all the good stuff in it. And like I said, it is a fun deck, which I do like. Like to bring out just when I'm playing against other fun decks. And moving right along, we have my Symphonic Warriors. I grabbed the next closest deck. Actually very happy we got the Pendulum cards for this deck. It actually made the deck uh, usable now, same with uh, Synthesis. Uh, a Synchro deck, I couldn't run pure, you know, Symphonics, just wasn't enough monsters to do that. Uh, other than that, I really do like the win format, the fact that it can search and have a extra normal summon effect as well. It's a deck that I want to play more of, you know, just haven't had the time to really get around to it. Maybe make some games with this deck as well, just I'm sure people would like to see. Because making a play where you go, you know, set the pendulum scales with my 1 and 7, have my search and extra normal, it definitely seems like a lot of fun. And I want to see how many different combo plays I can get off with the synchro monsters I use with the deck as well. See, where do we go from here? I have my Fluffle deck. This one has been one that has also, you know, been updated probably almost as much as Performa Pals. When new challengers came out, I've always had this deck uh, along with Performa Pals. Never really, you know, got around to having any other deck um, updated as much. But we got a lot of Fluffle support ever since new challengers. So I thought it was a very fun deck. The latest update with Fusion Enforcers gave us Penguin and Octo. And it just has, uh, you know, a lot of good key components of the deck. Plus, you know, the extra deck is really fun because you have a lot of different combo plays that you can go off of. It was just one that I always built off of since New Challengers. Uh, I think the original, I used Leo, Octo, not Octo, Al, and the originals, which was, I think actually just wolf and bear at the time but we've gotten so many more since then it's made the deck a lot more fun um i would call it the elemental heroes of you know arc v just because there are so many 
uh, different fusion combos that you can make with this deck. And we'll keep with the fusion trend for now. My Gem Knights, I actually had a deck profile very recently for this deck as well. I went with the more spell heavy, and I used to run traps in my Gem Knight deck, but I found so much more consistency when I, you know, just did monsters and spells. And once again, another fusion deck where you have loads of combos you can go off of. You can go, you know, heavy with your Zirconia, play, Zirconia plays, you can go with Citrine. Prismora. This was a deck that came out with the Dual Terminal as well, and that's where I got started with it. Uh, going off of a very fusion-esque play, I played this deck at Locals a couple times as well. It was just really fun. I would go for the big, uh, get two fusions out, then make Big Eye after using their own effects and taking my opponent's monsters. It was kind of a slower format at the time, but I also, you know, had fun. Uh, with it at that moment just because I was a big fusion guy also but you know the meta kind of sadly evolved and I couldn't main this deck as much as I wanted to as the newer decks came out but still love to play it every so often. Uh, up next my Morphage deck. Uh, sad to see this deck is probably not going to be as strong with the uh, upcoming Link format. Same can be said with a lot of Pendulum decks, but I still want to end up keeping it because there are probably going to be those times where I just want to, you know, play with old Yu-Gi-Oh rules, you know, if the other person I agree with is up to it, you know, not go with Link summoning and just stick to the old standards, you know, especially if we're just playing decks that are on the level of a Morphage. I think I'll be down for that, and I always like to go for the pure builds with my deck, so it's going to be nothing but straight, you know, a Morphage there. Uh, just a deck I, you know, uh, built because it was requested that I make a deck profile for it, but I ended up, you know, coming to like it. Just the different whole lockdown base of the deck is quite cool, in my opinion. Uh, up next, another one of my dual terminal decks, Gustos. I've had this deck uh, probably almost as long as I've had Naturias. It's a deck where, you know, you go off the basis of just special summoning a lot of different Gusto monsters, and they are also synchro-based. I also like to use the Axon Kicker with the... Uh, miracle synchro plays you can do with the deck. It's just a lot of fun and you know recycling your gustos using cam Taking control of other opponents monsters using Reese special summoning with Pelica. There's just so much to do I've actually never really gotten bored with the deck because also plenty of synchro options You exceed options also as well. It just you know could make this deck really really cool and always a different combo You can do off of this it was another deck just like Gem Knights where I got the cards from the dual terminal, had them earlier than everyone else, and just really enjoyed playing them. Let's go with the deck I probably update the third most after Fluffles and Perform Pals, Raid Raptors. Once again, another pure build for this. It you know, I tried it a couple times at locals next to um basically Metal Fell Yang Zing, and it was very fun. I could get a lot of combos off, especially when I opened up with the Ultimate Falcon. Found my opponent very difficult to get around that. I think we're still getting some new support for this deck as well, so definitely excited to see what that's going to be. It can, you know, really uh, make or break if we get that new rank 12 monster as well. It'd be fun if I ever go, you know, Tribute Lanius and go into Ultimate Falcon, then rank up from there. I always thought he would be my big key monster, but we still have one more out there, which I'm excited to see. So definitely look forward to updates to this deck as well. And then next we have, sadly, another deck that probably won't see uh, too much shine with Link Summoning coming out, Ignites. They're going to lock down the whole extra deck, so not really, you know, happy about that. But, like I said, if I stick to some old guideline rules, maybe I can still see some play out of this deck. But it was a deck, I did try this as well out. I think I tried my most of this at Sneak when we got uh, the new ones, which were Cavalier and... Uh, veteran. It was made putting in for sneak peek very easy since I just had to throw those in and the deck was ready to play. But it does rely heavily on your extra deck plays as well because one, if they're in the extra deck face up, you can't special summon them unless you have link summon requirements. So it's a good filter deck, you know, especially when I open up with the library. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see uh, what you know becomes this deck. Obviously I'm not going to take apart decks just because of the new format coming up, but you know I still would like to you know have some fun games at least maybe, like I said with arc v rules prior with these decks. And another deck coming up is Evil Swarms. I actually had this deck for a good while and I played it at locals um, as well for a good amount of time, especially when uh, my locals let us play with the dual terminal cards early, so I had Evil Swarms while well, everyone else played other decks. It was just really cool to 
practice and people were okay with me practicing with this deck because they wanted to get ready for the format in which Weevil Swarms were actually legal. Um, but I like the Ophion play, you know, set up, back row. It was a lockdown play. Plus, like I said, I was one of the only ones there. So I had a hands-on idea of how the deck ran before anyone else did. And it was also nice when I would, you know, just pull the dual terminal versions. Sadly, I don't have them anymore. Got this deck uh, from my girlfriend. Traded her a heavy amount of card by Vanguard for a couple of her decks. And this was one of the decks. Um, don't see too much play with it anymore. But, you know, it's one I'm definitely just going to want to hold on to for the memories of the old dual terminal. Sadly, I don't have my dual terminal version of the deck anymore, but, you know, still want to keep it around just because, like I said, it's a lot of fun to play. Probably one of my most fun decks I like to play is my Gishki deck. This one has been with me since the beginning of the dual terminal and a lot of my Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube career. Probably updated this one a lot as well. Next to Perform Pals and the other ones, but this one comes very seldomly because there's not much more I can change with this deck. This deck actually won me a Yu-Gi-Oh! day as well. The Ojama playmat was thanks to this. Played Spellbooks in the top two with this deck and actually won me the mat. I was actually surprised. The biggest hit that came from this deck was I can't run title anymore. More, but using Zeal Gygus as my main ritual monster still is a big powerhouse play that I like to do with the deck. Uh, moving right along, we have another deck that I recently updated, my Preta Plants. This deck, uh, very fun. I was always a fan of Yuri in the anime, so I'm glad I could fully make his uh, deck and making his main key ace monster, which is Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. And then also going off of Chimera of Felicia and his main powerhouse, Greedy Venom Fusion Dragon. Um, it was one of the good decks I wanted to build out of Fusion Enforcers. I didn't really want to build Invokers because everyone else was building them. So I focused on this and Fluffles and ended up completing the deck, which was very nice. And the new support from Maximum Crisis just makes the deck so much more consistent, especially uh, Orpheus Scorpio. Uh, just speeding up with the deck. I am a big fan of Fusion. Uh, if you had to guess, if I had to pick, I'd probably say Fusion is my second most favorite extra deck summoning after Synchro summoning because I just came back to the game with Synchros and, you know, they really um, introduced me back to the game in a way that I was happy to come back to Yu-Gi-Oh. But Preta Plants, you know, I'm still going to stick around and enjoy their play style, especially um, I think we still need a couple more cards to make the deck even more fun. But until then, I'll definitely look forward to it. And let's go ahead and talk about uh, one of my first decks that got me back into Yu-Gi-Oh, which was Naturia. I actually built this deck um, for my sister originally, for us to have two decks to play with. I think, I don't even remember what I was going to build for myself originally, but I was building this for her, and then she kind of lost interest, so I just kept the deck for myself and tried playing it, and I actually liked it a lot. I used this deck uh, when I first started going back to Locals. It was around the time when Duelist Revolution came out also. That deck, um, this deck, I don't think it saw as much play, but I liked it for the fact that, you know, you lock down your opponent's spell and traps, and at the time, all they could really do <laughs> when I was at Locals to stop the spell and trap lock was either have a monster with more attack on the field, or um, basically have uh, an effect veiler to stop it with Grand Mole. It was the biggest play that I saw at the moment, and with that, I really wanted to have some fun with uh, that deck as well. Um, but like I said, it was my biggest play, and I also later on got Naturia, Barkeon, and Beast from the Dual Terminal as well to make the deck more fun. But I'm always going to keep it, and hopefully, you know, I might even be able to play it some more with um, my other decks, basically because it is extra deck reliant, but other than that, um, relying on the main deck is a big key play of this, so I might be able to see some use of this, especially with the new Earthlink monsters as well. Maybe we'll see how that goes in the future. Uh, next up, we have my Cliffort deck. I did a deck profile recently for this as well, in which I um, made it more push with the monster-heavy plays. I don't have any monoliths, sadly, for the deck, but other than that, um, maybe monolith will soon get a reprint, but I don't think it will be as strong anymore because of the new hit with the Link monsters. But I always was a big fan of this. Before I played Metal Foe Yang Zing at Locals, I was playing uh, Clifforts, and then a little bit of Demise Clifforts, but I didn't like Demise Clifforts as much because it was more of a back row, back row reliant deck instead of, you know, making use of your towers, which now in the deck is Sky Base since Towers is banned. It was a, you know, play where, you know, you just get your big monster out and they have to rely on that, which I am a big fan of those kind of decks as well. But, you know, I still wanted to not just completely abandon on this deck, which is why I kept this one around. 
And next up we have my, actually thinking which one to grab, my uh, Super Quantal deck. Um, did a re, uh, not about to say reprint, uh, deck profile on this a while back. Sadly, I don't think um, it's getting any more support. I think the latest card we got was the Super Quantal Alphan Strike, which really does help with the deck. It's like a small battle between your opponent, which I thought was very interesting. And I originally wasn't going to make this deck with Wing Raiders. I was going to focus on Raid Raptors and the last deck, Pharaoh Knights. Yeah, with that. But, you know, this deck kind of grew on me. I kept pulling the Quantal Red. So I was like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. The rest of the stuff was definitely easier to pull. And I ended up building it quite easily. Um, you know, I had them. I picked them up when they weren't that expensive and they jumped up. And then I sadly just, you know, held on to them. Didn't get rid of them. But, you know, I liked the deck and it was a lot of fun. So I'm glad I didn't end up getting rid of this deck. And still a deck that you'll want to, you know, play just to get off your Quantal plays. I still don't have uh, Magnus, uh, as I stated for my last deck profile to run, because hopefully I gotta grab one of those to finish up this deck as well. And my most recent deck profile, or one of them, is my Digital Bugs. I actually had this deck out of the sleeves for a while. With the new cards, I thought, you know, let's put it together and give um, my subscribers a deck profile. Still even have most of the extra deck with it, just showing how recent of a deck profile it was. But uh, it's fun. I haven't played it as much. I've actually had more friends use it than me uh, in, you know, uh, games. Just for the fact that it, um, I use it uh, probably once or twice. But then other than that, whenever I play games with friends, this is the deck. They're like, hey, can I use your digital bugs? And they're like, sure, uh, no problem there. And they actually do a lot better than me. I don't know the deck too, too well combo-wise. I know, like, you know, what needs to be run. But a lot of my friends just like using it a lot more than me, which is why I keep this deck around. And we're actually winding down. We have a couple more decks to go through. And um, next up, Flower Guardians. This was one I really like to play as a fun deck at Locals, just because there's so many combo plays. I'm also a big fan of Enjoy Chojiro from the anime. I like his Enjoy uh, play style that he does. So uh, I actually perfected, not I wouldn't say it's the most perfect deck profile, but you know I've perfected it to the combo play that I like to do. And that's, you know, Spell Monsters, and then your main extra deck is, you know, just three of each of the ones we have so far. I think we still have a couple synchros that are coming out for this deck too, so hopefully we get those soon and I can have a full powered extra deck for Cardian soon. But so much milling and drawing makes this deck really, really fun to play with. And we have a deck that I have to swap cards back and forth with because I still need, I think, one Gishki Aquamir, and that's my Gishki Heretics. This one makes use of the Heretics with the Gishkis. Uh, the level 6s. I actually made this deck a while back, took it apart, and then tried to rebuild it. The hardest things to find for this deck were the uh, Labordite Dragons. I think they're still up there a little bit in price, but other than that, uh, most of the other stuff was just gathering extra deck for this deck. But it's a fun deck because it makes use of the tribute effect from the Heretics and then the uh, Ritual Summon for the uh, Ivigishki. So you get these two out and then you can even overlay for exceed plays. Just a lot of different things you can do with this deck, which is why I like this one. Uh, next up we have Lyralusks. I actually have not um, played this deck much after the deck profile. I practiced with it a bit, but it's actually been sitting around. So I might either, you know, give it to a friend of mine who is interested in the deck or, you know, keep it for to see if we get any more new support, which I don't think we will. It doesn't seem that deck, that kind of deck that would get more support. Same with like Wind Witches, uh, which is more of an engine, but, you know, still wanted to try making Wind Witches a deck. But this one was easier to do since this just had mostly common cards from the latest set, but still one that I'll definitely, you know, try at least to um, keep around in case someone else wants it or you know even try and see if I can you know play a little more just to go off with their cool exceed and fusion plays and we have spirals I don't know if spirals are getting any more support but I built this deck as another request from uh, my subscribers they want to see a spiral update and I was a big fan I thought it was very cool that you could go with the Goyo uh, defender play because that was the one thing I was always a fan of this play and I still wanted to work on a Goyo deck for my subscribers but still found that quite difficult the biggest thing I came up with was using Naturia monsters mixed in with the synchros but the fact that this deck could make it work too and then go off of Xyz plays off of the Goyo defenders you make very interesting to me how you could do stuff like that with this deck um, other than that I do like the key combo plays it's probably my favorite of the Burning Abyss Spiral and the Noble Knight you know the TCG exclusive decks 
Um, most interesting one to me, but other than that, I do like playing it a lot just for the synchro plays it can do as well. And next up, another one of my troll decks, we have Dustin's. This deck, uh, I think I did an update recently. I don't think I've put in any of the new trap yet, which wouldn't really call for, you know, an update to the deck profile, but other than that, you know, we'll see. Uh, I don't think it's getting any more support later on. Maybe we'll see one new card down the road, just another, maybe, hopefully another monster Dustin that helps with the deck and their combo plays. You also see that my voice is starting to go just because this is a long video, but you know, I want to get through it all for you. Next up, Speedroids. I am a fan of all four of Yuya's, you know, alternate universe decks. The one I don't have, sadly, right now that I got rid of was Phantom Knights, but hopefully I can rebuild that one day and have one of each. I have Speedroids, I have Performer Pals, I have Preda Plants. Just need to grab Phantom Knights again, which shouldn't be too, too hard. Like I said, I think the most expensive thing is Break Sword, and I do have Break Swords. It's just the main deck that I gather up. Again, but Speedroids, uh, Hugo's Synchro plays were very nice. I don't have, you know, the uh, Crystal Wing and Clear Wings with the deck right now. They're at other decks, obviously. But need to get some more Speedroid extra deck monsters to have use of with this deck as well. But fun to do the Synchro plays. I did a lot of play videos online as well with this deck. And this was the deck I, um, after Red Dragon Archfiend, wanted to put together with the High Speed Riders uh, pack. So definitely going to keep this around and keep all four of those decks together. Another one of my fun decks next to Karibo is Token. This is my Token deck. It's actually got a lot of views on the video. I was happy for that. It was a fun deck, and I really enjoyed playing this. It was part of the fun uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament I had with my friends, which is why this Graceful Charity is still in the deck as well, because we each got to use one banned card. But you can do so much with all your Token abuse and the Stampedes and the Sundays. Uh, Super Hippo Carnival is really cool. It's just a four monster card count, the Scape Ghost, and then other than that, it's a totally token compliant, reliant deck. And this is basically what I like to use to fake on my opponent into thinking I have an extra deck when in reality it's just my tokens. And we have my Despot deck. I always keep this one with my Cardians just because if a person wants to play, I find Despots versus Cardians to be a balanced fight. Just need to, you know, get some of my extra deck out. Uh, this card came out with new challengers, but it wasn't until about, like, Clash of Rebellion that I actually gave a deck spot deck profile. A lot of fun. I like the Synchro and the Pendulum idea of the deck. Uh, we'll see if this deck still kicks around after the new format, but with Despot base and your big Despot 9 combo plays, I can still see this deck being powerful, because you don't really need Synchros as much as you can rely on 4, 3, 2, and the other one's uh, plays to get a lot of cards off. And two decks left. We have actually three. Uh, Medulce's. This was another gift deck from my girlfriend. I originally made it for her, but then she ended up giving it back to me just because she kind of got out of Yu-Gi-Oh! But, you know, it's a fun deck. Very competitive. I think she used this the most at Locals. Um, compared to any other deck, she liked the Pop Rocks where you use Brilliant Fusion with Medulce's. Very, you know, cool combo play, and she was a big fan of Tiaramisu as well with Chocolate on Mode. So definitely holding on to this deck. Don't have any plans to get rid of it either, since it is a kind of sentimental deck in a way. And we have Luna Lights. Uh, once again, I want to make all of Yuzu's decks as well, so I will have Melodious, uh, Luna Lights, Wind Witches, and uh, Lyra Lusks. So I gotta rebuild Melodious, but uh, Lunar Lights were very easy to build. I think one of my most cheapest decks. I think it comes out to $20 total for the whole deck to build. So definitely one I'll just want to hold on to just for the fact that getting rid of it would kind of be more of a waste to me than, you know, to actually, you know, get some trades off of it. Since it isn't that much, you know, money, it's more worth just to keep it as a whole for the fun of it and maybe have some competitive deck videos later on in which I use all of the counterpart Yuzu decks in one big tournament play. We'll see. It'd be definitely interesting to see. And lastly, my final deck that I have in my entire collections are Ghost Tricks. I actually got this from a friend of mine who is getting out of Yu-Gi-Oh. He just wanted some trade bait. I think I traded him some Vanguard for this deck, and he ended up giving me his entire Ghost Tricks, which was, I think, part of the last of his Yu-Gi-Oh collection. But other than that, uh, that's how I ended up getting this deck, and definitely going to hold on to it. Just another fun deck to add into the collection. But yeah, after a long video, that is my entire deck collection video. I hope you enjoyed my fourth deck collection video. It was definitely a lot of fun talking about all my decks. 
and I hope you all enjoyed as well. Um, as in the last videos, please don't forget to comment down below what decks you have in your collection, which ones are your favorites, and which ones you just like to use the most. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Kira Twig out.